Tonight, uh, I'm celebrating my favorite number one great being, which is my own guru, Swami Muktananda. And I call these programs Ganesh Puri Days, which, because uh, they center on my time with Baba in Ganesh Puri. I spent three years in the early 70s in his ashram in Ganesh Puri, and that was a time of intense spiritual practice because the ashram was out in the country, away from everything. There was no TV, no entertainment. There was just programs from 3.30 in the morning when the bell rang uh, right down till night. There was chanting. There was meditation. Uh, there was ashram work and nothing else. It was completely like that. And against the background <coughs> of this endless day that just kept repeating, always the same, uh, you noticed your own changes, your inner changes. You noticed your moods, your thoughts, and you watched everything, and, you, and against that, you started to get a picture of yourself. When there's a lot of noise, you can't hear. But when there's a certain silence, then you can start to hear. So when everything is, is stable like that, you can start to see your own neuroses, actually. You see them, they stand in front of you and declare themselves. And, uh, and after a while, you start to get first a very unpretty picture, and then finally things start to fall into place. So this was uh, my time in, in Ganeshpur with Baba. Baba ran a very tight ship. They had a very disciplined and intense ashram. There was a lot of spiritual energy there, tremendous shakti. People were having kundalini experiences and, and growing in various ways. And, and you, had no, you had no alternative but to look at yourself, confront yourself, and grapple with, with uh, your limitations. And then, and then you'd have breakthroughs, and you'd have transporting experiences of the divine. Then you'd think, I've got it. I'm enlightened. Then you'd crash. And every horrible uh, neurosis would come up. And it went on like that. So it was a very important time. And as I said, there was no content there. You know, it was very interesting because now people want to read about it, look at the website, what's going on here, what are the teachings, what's the tradition, all that. We got to the ashram, there was, there was nothing published. And nobody, you know, even spoke English. You didn't know what was going on. You're just thrown into this maelstrom and, uh, and nobody explained anything. They didn't say what it all meant. Uh, nothing. And, and um, uh, finally, after a while, Baba took mercy on us, and he started having question-answer sessions. And there we actually could ask him spiritual questions, and then he would answer us. And so that was tremendously valuable. Those were my favorite, favorite moments in the week. He used to do that a couple times a week. We'd go into Baba's room and sit with him and ask him questions. We'd write out the question, and he'd answer. <clears throat> and these have been collected in a series of books called Satsang with Baba, a wonderful collection on every possible topic, from the most exalted, like who am I, what is universal consciousness, to, you know, should I eat sugar or, you know, whatever. I have a pain in my left side, what will I do, you know, things like that. <clears throat> but uh, these books are a compendium, so I'm reading question and answers from those books. September 4th, 1973. Stan asks, he says, sometimes heat gets concentrated in the top of my head, especially when I'm absorbed in japa. So this is what you would call a yogic question about a yogic process or something that's going on inside the body. Japa means, what is japa? Japa. Uh, repetition of mantra. See, we, you can repeat a mantra like on the beads like this. Om Namah Shivaya, 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 Om Namah Shivaya. I concluded after an objective inventory of my thought process that saying Om Namah Shivaya was always more valuable than anything I could think of. And so that's japa. And made, it made me feel better anyway. I had a, I had a unique gift of thinking thoughts that made me feel miserable. It was, a, it was practically a city that I had. It was a talent. You know, do you have that talent? 
thoughts that bring you down. Now, it's a really stupid for a machine to produce an output that makes that destroys the machine, isn't it? We are that machine. We are that stupid machine that creates thoughts. And not only that, when we have a negative thought about ourselves, we love it and we cling to it, and we want to milk it for everything it's worth. I'm worthless. I'm worthless. I'm worthless. And then we like to to uh, work with it and work with it and expand it. <coughs> We're truly strange. Anyway, so Stan, uh, he says he gets heat concentrated on the top of his head. At times, my face and body turn red like a beet, and I feel like I'll explode. Is there any danger in this? Is there anything I can do to moderate this effect? He did later explode, it's true. <laughs> I can say no more. Baba says, Baba says, and let me say one more thing. This a yogic question. And there were there were yogis there, there were karma yogis, there were bhaktas or devotees. So the different people had different approaches to what they were doing. In the same ashram, Baba had the genius of being able to accommodate all types of, of practice. Some were involved in devotional practice, some in yoga. They just wanted to control the mind and to get the kundalini to move upwards and all that kind of stuff. Others weren't interested in that at all. They just wanted to serve. So there are many different types. And this is a, obviously a yogic question about the mechanics of the process. Baba says, you don't need to moderate the effect because whatever is happening is quite correct and it shows that your inner japa is going very well. This experience is the surest mark of intense inner japa. So it's saying that the mantra repetition is having an effect. If no inner revolution is caused in your bloodstream through japa, there's no point in doing japa. Now I've found that Repeating the mantra is tremendously powerful. But you have to develop a taste for it. You have to give it a chance. You have to work with it. And when you do, it, it has a profound uh, transforming effect inside. When you repeat the mantra, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, or the chosen mantra, it, has a, it actually transforms the subtle <coughs> nerve channels within. It actually expands the mind, purifies the mind, gets rid of negative tendencies. He says, it's when the prana combined with the mantra becomes stabilized in the space of the sahasrar that heat is produced. But this heat is different from the ordinary heat produced by eating the wrong kind of food. So it's not physical heat. You know, you can eat certain kinds of food that, that creates a overheating. Uh, but it's not physical. It's psychic heat. Uh, and it's when, the, when the, the breath or the prana gets combined with the mantra, it creates this inner heat. But it's a psychic heat. I don't know if a thermometer would, would uh, be able to perceive it. Very often in meditation, I bet you some of you get quite hot. Any of you get very hot in meditation? Have, have had, not always, but have had the experience of getting hot? Raise your hand if you have. Any of you gotten cold in meditation? OK. So it's a psychic heat, though. It doesn't necessarily translate in, in thermometer in degrees, you know. He says, you should not worry about it all because this heat is a good sign. It will not have any bad effect. If you're doing meditation and the mantra intensely, you may find your eyes will also turn red. This is why I wear dark spectacles. <laughs> you can explain this. To, this is Baba at his finest now what he says here, just to hide that redness. Many people are curious and ask, why does Baba wear sunglasses? The fact is that most people in the world are blind, and they confuse spectacles with sunglasses. I don't wear sunglasses. I wear spectacles. <laughs> he means that prescription sunglasses? Is that what he means? OK. When you get into advanced stages of meditation, your eyes begin to emit light, and they also become very tender. They can't bear the strong light of the sun or camera flashes. That's why I had my spectacles tinted. That's all. So he did. He had sensitive eyes. 
Baba goes on, it's all, it's all right for you to feel heat in the head and for your eyes to turn red because this heat is the heat of meditation. If the face and body turn red, it shows that your japa has penetrated to the bloodstream. Your japa should penetrate to all seven constituents of the body. And if it doesn't, your japa hasn't start, started bearing fruit. He says, you've only been toiling so far without any results. The japa that you do systematically will do its work in all seven constituents of the body in a systematic manner, and that'll be of great benefit to you. So it'll, it'll affect you on every level, physically, as well as emotionally, mentally, all the different levels of the being, it will, it will operate there. Baba says, no method is more effective than japa, and that is why japa has been prescribed in every spiritual discipline. He would say that again and again, you know. Uh, I always think of the repetition of mantra as the easiest and method and the most despised. You know, it's kind of blue-collar yoga, and it's very effective. And I always like to emphasize it because in, uh, I don't want to sound too cranky, but in these modern times, they despise the good old honest way. But mantra repetition is a very good, honest, uh, sort of old-school way of doing meditation, and it does purify and uplift the mind. He says, all forms of yoga have taken the support of japa, bhakti yoga, devotion, karma yoga, service, jnana yoga, which is uh, wisdom, and also dhyana yoga, which is meditation. Only japa yoga stands on its own and doesn't seek anybody else's support. Lord Shiva has declared that realization comes by japa. Japa purifies the seven bodily constituents and the 12 astrological houses in a systematic manner. Baba wrote a, a very uh, interesting article on Japa in which he says it goes through all the 12 houses of the, of the horoscope, purifying them, which, which means basically the areas of life. So it deals with the physical body, then uh, relationships, career, mind, all these aspects of life, and it has effect in each one. <clears throat> it even affects the bones. And that's why the body of a great saint is not cremated, because even his bones become blessed by japa. Though japa is the easiest of disciplines, it is the best. So that's his answer to uh, Stan. <clears throat> 